Well, I didn't figure you guys would like Tailwind CSS tips this much, but since you do, here's five more of them. This first one is very, very straightforward, and I actually cannot believe that I didn't know this earlier. So if you just need like a square, so just a div or something that's the same width and same height, normally you would do something like height 12, width 12, but there's kind of a shorthand for this, which is just size 12, and that will just give you width and height in one line. Is this kind of dumb? Yes. Have I used it like 50 times since someone told me about it? Also, yes. For this next one, I just have this basic little card here, and I have some text that you can't really see next to this little logo. You'll see right here, it says Tom is loading with an opacity of zero. Now, how I would like this to act is anytime I hover over any part of this card, I would like for that text to show up. And the way that we can do that is by setting the wrapping div that we want to be hoverable to group. You'll see that this doesn't actually add any classes, but what that allows us to do is then on my span right here, add states based on that group. So I could do group hover opacity 100. And now whenever I hover over any part of the group, so whether it's the button, or over here or actually on the text, it will increase its opacity to 100%. Now you can also even nest these groups and name them. So for instance, say on this button right here, whenever I hover over it, I wanna have this little arrow spin. What I can do is come down to my button right here and add a group to this as well, which I'll name follow just using slash and then whatever I wanna name it. Then in my arrow in here, I can say whenever you hover over the group that is called follow, I wanna rotate it 45 degrees. And whenever it's active, so whenever you're pressing on it, I wanna rotate it back to zero degrees. That will give me something that looks like this. For this next example, I just have this little basic email input that looks like this. And what I would like to happen here is whenever I actually focus on the input, I want this email tag to go away. If we look at the code, we'll see that this span is what we actually want to make disappear. And this input is what we want to be focusable. Now, obviously we could do this with JavaScript, but you can also do it with Tailwind CSS peer styling. In order to do that on my input, I'm just going to add a class of peer similar to group. We'll see that this doesn't actually add any styling. But what that then allows me to do is on my span, add styles based on the state of the peer element. So I could say peer focus scale zero. If we take a look, it will add some CSS that looks like this. And now whenever I focus on my input, that email goes away. For this next one, I'm gonna take essentially what we just had there a second ago, and I'm gonna add one extra little piece to this. So what I wanna happen here is whenever I actually focus on my input, I would like to have an additional little outline that goes outside of my border here. And you can use the normal outline class, but you can also use something called ring. So what ring does is it essentially uses a box shadow with no blur. And this will give you the effect of essentially like an additional outline. You can stack this on all kinds of stuff. I'm just doing it here with an input because it was pretty straightforward with the code that I already had. If I just save that with a ring of one, and then we zoom in here, we'll see we have this little kind of basic transparent blue ring on the outside. And we can then give that color. So I could say ring neutral 500 and then opacity of zero, because that's where I wanted to kind of start the animation. I could add a ring offset of zero, and then I could animate those values saying whenever we're actually focusing on this, give it a ring of color indigo 500 and give an offset of two. So now we'll see when we're not focused, nothing really shows up. But whenever we actually focus on the input, we get this extra little outline here. Again, you can use this for all kinds of stuff. This might not be the perfect example, but it is pretty useful to be able to have this extra little utility for adding additional borders outside of stuff that doesn't use the normal border class or whatever. And the last thing that we're going to look at here are plugins. I need a little bit more room on my screen here. And plugins are kind of a bonus here because they're not just one thing. It's like a whole concept within Tailwind CSS. Plugins allow you to extend the normal Tailwind CSS classes with your own classes, whether that be, you know, custom built plugins or some of the community built plugins or some of the actual Tailwind CSS built plugins. Some of the more popular ones are these typography and forms plugins. Here's an example of the typography plugin in use. So we have this kind of like CMS data. It's like a blog post and all of it's really well formatted, right? Like different headings kind of have different sizes. There's bold for the you know, different pieces of the font, the different headings have different amounts of size, stuff like that. If we actually look at the code here in the playground, we'll see that none of this actually has any specific styling on it, right? Like none of the paragraphs have their own styling, none of the links have their own styling, none of the block quotes, anything like that. And all that this really requires you to do is add one class called prose, and then you can add some additional stuff like how big the prose is or, you know, the color of the text, etc. And it will automatically add all of these classes for you to your text. So you don't have to actually figure out how big you want, you know, a heading one to be or a heading two to be or what color the text should be. This is especially useful, like I mentioned, for, you know, CMS data or something like that for a blog where you don't have like direct styling over all of the different things. There are some other really nice ones like the Tailwind Forms plugin, which just gives you basic defaults for input styling and stuff like that. There's even entire component libraries like Daisy UI, which are built on top of Tailwind plugins. I'll let you take a look at that. We don't need to go through this whole thing. And if you take a look at the Tailwind docs, you can even make your own plugin 
plugins. So I have one example of that down here. This plugin just gives us a background grid. So it looks something like this. If we take a look at our Tailwind config, we'll see that components are essentially just a function that you can pass in, gives you a couple of different utilities that you can use for spreading in colors and things. I actually got this specific plugin from someone's tweet, I think. I'll try and find that and link it if I can. But with a relatively small amount of code, you can add your own utility functions. So for this example, I just have this BG grid neutral 200, which automatically adds this SVG as a background image for me. And that will give me, you know, something like this. Super fun to play with. I'm actually not an expert at building these myself, but if that's something that you guys feel like could be useful to learn, I'd be happy to dig into it a little bit more and make a video on that. That's all I've got for today. All of this code will be in a link in the description. See you guys next time. Peace.